Well, Coach, we are in a sweet spot as far as football weather is concerned today in Nashville. Just enough chill in the air for a sweatshirt, light breeze, fall in full swing at Nissan Stadium. This crowd here fired up for football as a moment ago their Titans were introduced. This should be a good one as the Titans get set to match up with Phillip Rivers and the Los Angeles Chargers. Play fake to Gordon. Now Rivers. Well, he's going to take a shot right away. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them, they're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. He better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Rivers. Complete. It's Henry. And he makes it all the way down to the 31. Let's go, baby. Let's go. A big play there for L.A. 45 yards. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a starch right out of them. Rivers now to throw on first down. For Keenan Allen, that's complete. That throw good for four. It's second down. Good completion there from Phillip Rivers, who has been really good against Tennessee in his career. This is the ninth time that he has faced the Titans as a starter, and so far he's seven and one against them. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Melvin Gordon, the two-time Pro Bowler. Two yards the gain there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Gordon happy to be back in the fold after reporting to the Chargers on September 26. You know, the fan base is happy to have Melvin Gordon back as well. Week five, his first game back, 12 carries, 31 yards, and he certainly figures to be the bell cow in that backfield for the Chargers going forward. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. But they took the shot, didn't get it, and there's definitely a difference here because they had a chance to get seven, maybe eight if they pushed it. Instead, they'll likely settle for three. Yeah, opening drive, holding him to three. Psychologically, maybe a win for the defense. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the Chargers grab themselves a 3-0 lead. Well, of course, you want to find the end zone, but, you know, you go on the road, you get three points. I think you take it. Yeah, pretty good start to the day for them, don't you think? Right? You go out there, get the three points. Now, look, it's not going to silence this crowd, but it might take a little bit of steam out of them right off the top. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken at his four. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Tennessee Titans coming back out here on offense. This is a team that's in danger of falling off of the pace in the AFC South because now they're two and four after two straight losses. Two games behind the Texans, Charles. And next up, that's the good news. They will have three of the next four at home. And I think a lot of the teams in the South thought that they could keep better touch with the Texans last week because the Texans were in Kansas City. So while you don't count games beforehand, they kind of did. They thought that would be a loss and that would keep them closer. That was a huge win for the Texans to help separate. But three of the next four at home for Tennessee. They get the Chargers who have been struggling and then the Buccaneers right there in Nashville. Then they go to Carolina who's been playing awfully well and then back home for Kansas City before they reach their open week. The tale of their season could be told before that open date.
And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Throwing is Mariota, and that's going to be incomplete. The intended receiver there was Jonu Smith, and that'll bring up second down. Maybe a little over-anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't, because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. Wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield and almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. Throwing again. Mariota on second and ten. Complete. Smith has it. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter, it's a good running back dive play. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. Working out of the gun, Mariota. And the throw there going to be incomplete. And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. On fourth down, here's the AFC Pro Bowl punter the last two years. That's Brett Kern to kick it for Tennessee. Deep for the Chargers, Desmond King. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Chargers offense getting the football back here. You see, do you, let's return to that week six game against the Steelers. Now, yes, they were at home, but really, as, Al, My, as Al Michael said they? during the broadcast, it was about 80% Steeler fans. A lot of terrible towels in the stadium. But if you look at this team right now at two and four, injured offensive line, what do we make of them? They've got to figure out another way to fashion offense, and they're hoping with the return of Melvin Gordon they can become two-dimensional again, that he can actually run the football and take some of the pressure off of the offensive line and Phillip Rivers throwing it, as well as circling out of the backfield and catching it himself. That has to happen soon, because otherwise, they're going to be out of this race. The Chargers are on the road now against two top-10 defenses at Tennessee, then at Chicago. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Now Rivers going to give it off to Gordon. Nine yards on the pick up there as he'll be left with third and one. Gordon, a pro bowler for the second time last season, 885 yards, 10 touchdowns, and that was only in 12 games played a season ago. And he also switched jersey numbers in the offseason from 28 to 25, and 25, that's the number he wore when he was dominating the Big Ten college gridiron for the Badgers of Wisconsin. Throwing Rivers. And he's got a man open, that's Allen. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. And now time is called as we've got an injured charger down there on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Now Gordon on first down. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Give him 12 yards there. The Chargers have a first down. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. 17 yards for the Chargers there as they've got themselves a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go through a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. 
Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Throwing Rivers. He finds his receiver, Williams, for a Charger touchdown. A three-yard touchdown pass for the Chargers. They're able to widen their lead. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead grows to 10-0. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. They look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their own 27. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Tackle made by Thomas Davis. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. That's gonna set them back five yards. So the delay of game penalty moves it back five. That makes it second and ten. From the gun, Mariota. It's caught. Humphreys. It's a gain of seven, and that'll make it third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And, boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. A second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Third down turns to first with that five-yard pickup. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Joey Bosa in on the stop. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? <laughs> you talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in, he's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. 
And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. To throw Mariota. Completes it to Davis. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A good pick up there, 26 yards. First down carry for Henry. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Mariota hands to Henry. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. He was brought down by Michael Davis. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And he's got a man, Corey Davis. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. First and goal at the six-yard line. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Now Lewis here on first down, and they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Joey Bosa with the tackle for loss. How about that pedigree in his family? Yeah, some good pedigree. Tell us about it, Mr. Davis. Dad played in the NFL, first-round draft pick. Uncle was a first-round draft pick. He's got a brother coming behind him. But Joey Bosa, guy plays really, really hard and plays all aspects on defense. And finding room to work, he's down to the two-yard line. Seven big yards on the carry there to get him within range of the goal line with third down upcoming. Ten nothing the score after one on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from Tennessee, and it's the homestanding Titans in possession as they'll see what they can do on third and goal. The Titans on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Derrick Henry. Yeah, Henry fighting for the marker, but I don't think he got there. He did not. No gain on the play, and what to do now on fourth and goal. Defense didn't budge on third down. Now, what are we going to see on fourth? We are soon to find out, but does this feel like old school football or what? Oh, right? yeah. This is an old fashioned goal line stand. I know what I would call on offense. I would go for it. And I want some type of a play where my quarterback has a chance to run it or throw it. I don't just want one static play. They took it all the way to the one, but in the end, opt for three. Just doesn't sound right, does it? If you get all the way down to the one yard line, isn't that supposed to be a play in the end zone that culminates in a touchdown for your team? <laughs> and per usual, it felt like the guys on the sideline wanted to go ahead and go for it. Of course they did, but of course head coach, it defers back to him, and he made the decision, let's get three out of this, make sure we get some points. Parkey now following the main field goal to kick this one off. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. 
Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counterpunch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, get into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you think to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. I love it. Let's see if they dial it up this drive. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Rivers going to turn and give this one to his running back, Gordon. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. On third down, Rivers. Able to get this to Gordon. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. Let's go, let's go, let's go. On first down, Gordon, and he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. Oh, yeah. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets him back now for second down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays, My too. Head. Eyes running. up, head up, run right through them. I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to come back to you. They go play action. Rivers. Complete. Hunter Henry with a grab. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. They are happy to have Hunter Henry back after missing more than a month of the season. And, and when he came back, made his presence felt in the Sunday night or week six, albeit in a losing effort. But he had eight catches, 100 yards, and two touchdowns. They'll try and run it. Here's Gordon. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. It's a first down following a gain of three. That's a tremendous group effort there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. They go back to Gordon here on first down. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. On second down, Eckler. He's got a first down and much more inside the 20. And all the way down to the five. That one covers 29 yards. First down. He showed his shiftiness and his explosion to take him all the way down near the goal line. Love that description, and it creates momentum. Maybe you hand it to him again since he's got it going, or do you fake it to him and throw it to a teammate? Right now, the options are wide open. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. The free safety roaming all the way up to the line of scrimmage to make that stop. How about his ability to trust his eyes and figure out it was not a pass play and go fast towards the line of scrimmage in order to make that tackle? They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. Cameron Wake makes plays like that look simple because I think he plays with excellent leverage. Really does a nice job of being lower than the offensive guys trying to block him. and gets underneath them and goes up and down the line of scrimmage to make those types of plays. And kept him to a short run play there. Third and goal for Rivers. And Gordon will work his way in. Touchdown, Chargers. A five-yard touchdown. And the Chargers, they're able to widen their lead. 
CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal and way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. A run there on first down gets three up to the 28. A gain of three, second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Mariota gives to Henry. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. An 11 yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance. But a short yardage, trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always oh, a nice luxury to have, isn't he? A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and ten. Running jet sweep here, Humphreys. And he's going to get across midfield and into Charger territory. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Anytime the offense shows what they call a shot play or a chunk play where they're trying to get big yardage, sometimes people just call it gadget plays, and you hold it to a gain that we just saw there, you feel pretty good about yourself as a defense. Off play action to Henry. Here's Mariota. It comes, and he lost the football. Mariota had it jarred loose. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing... Not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, if, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but if the other team doesn't get it, that's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. To throw is Mariota. And that will be incomplete. So a couple of first downs on this drive, but it's looking like another empty possession. And those empty possessions are certainly starting to pile up. So the adjustments that teams talk about all the time have to be taking place. They've got to analyze what's breaking down and figure a way to fix it. Here's Brett Kern now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They have to be pleased with the way that they've moved the football thus far. And why wouldn't they be? Two touchdowns on a field goal in their first three possessions. They're playing so well right now, the field goal probably feels like a disappointment. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 24. They'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. Brent Urban there to get him down. 
Well, we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. On second down, they'll run with Gordon. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. You don't want no problem. You don't want no problem for me. It's a gain of two yards. And it's third down. The Chargers on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and four. From the gun, Rivers. And it's complete, Henry. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Well, last year, Henry really looked poised for a prime breakout season, but then May 22nd, tore his ACL during OTAs, ruled out for the year. Actually was added to the active roster in a pretty heroic return for their playoff clash with New England, but did not play. 29 career games for Henry, 12 touchdowns, and now with Antonio Gates' career coming to a close, they expect a lot out of the 24-year-old Hunter Henry. Complete. Keenan Allen, the intended target, and that'll make it third down. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Working out of the gun, Rivers. He's got his man, it's Williams. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 27-yard line. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. They'll throw again. Rivers. That's complete. It's Gordon. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. The Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Rivers now, 12 of 15, throwing the ball, 80% so far, and it's first and 10. <laughs> From the red zone now, Rivers toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Good coverage that time by Malcolm Butler. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Throwing again on second and ten. Rivers to the end zone, but it's incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Hunter Henry. But now it'll be third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because any completions on first and second down, now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, it's Rivers. And caught by Henry. 
And Henry going to bowl his way in for a Charger touchdown. Phillip Rivers with his third touchdown pass of the game. For the Chargers, they're able to widen their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Extra point right down the middle. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be fielded at the six. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And you're under a minute to go in the half, a first half that hasn't been particularly kind to you. How do you think they'll play this? Well, I think the smart approach is to run out the clock, lick your wounds at the half, and see if you can come up with a strategy to play better in the second. But there's also something to challenging your offense right here. You know, hey, guys, you help dig this hole. See if you can get us out of it a little bit before the half runs out. Let's go make some plays. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. One of his main targets, Delaney Walker, the intended receiver. And it's second down. All right, CD, let's have a little fun. Now that we're into October, I'm going to give you some AFC teams. You tell me quickly, contender or pretender. You ready? Yes, let's do it. All right, let's start in the east. Buffalo. Contender for a wild card spot. Okay, how about the Chargers? Pretender. AFC North, the Steelers. Contender because the AFC North is a jumble. Okay, and then lastly, let's go to the South, Jacksonville. Pretender, Houston now in control. play on the completion got them half of what they needed now here's a tough third and five now Mariota and this is going to be incomplete well, it's looking like another three and out here and at some point got to be able to put together a drive to keep your defense from having to go right back out on the field I feel like things are starting to unravel a little bit and we're not even at halftime here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee and this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback here comes the Chargers offense now back out onto the field you've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half you're well on your own side of the field what are we doing here Coach Davis well I'm trying something on first down and it's something that's safe it's something that's been done many times before a lot of people say it's not even worth trying but I'm running a draw I'm running a screen I'm seeing if something pops and if it does that can alter my strategy and potentially get me some points and if it doesn't work well then you just run the clock out and go to the locker room and this should be the final play before the quarter ends. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! So the Chargers will start the second half with the lead and the football as we're underway in the third quarter. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. 
and I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Again, it's Henry. Five yards on first down, but now just a one-yard pickup there on second. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. And that is incomplete. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know, the rhythm seems off. Here's Brett Kern now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Now we'll look at the Chargers offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Hey, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, They're shutting running. them down, not giving up running. any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. That throw into the arms of Allen. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 17 yards for the Chargers there as they've got themselves a first down. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. They'll try the right side this time here with Gordon. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. On second and nine, Rivers. It's caught by Davis. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 22 yards there, a first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Another tote for Gordon. He's been busy this afternoon. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Set 180, 390. Wait, 80 high. Here we go again. Wait, 80 high. Play fake to Gordon. Now Rivers. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. Rivers now. Complete. It's Henry. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. That, I believe, will put him over 100 yards receiving for the game. Yes, it will. And he's got a first down to boot. Ready! Round 80! Guys, game situation. Let's go. First down, Rivers. For Keenan Allen, that's complete. And they move this all the way down to the 9. An excellent pickup of 20 yards.
The three red zone trips, three touchdowns so far. They'll look for a fourth on second and goal. To the air again here, Rivers. And this is complete. It's Allen. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the 5 on a pickup of 5. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of 5. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be. And Gordon will work his way in for a Charger touchdown. Melvin Gordon, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Chargers, they're able to widen their lead. And while no one on the offensive line will get the six points next to their name, they should be credited with this one. Tremendous blocking to get the runner into the end zone. The extra point splits the uprights, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded at the two. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line right around the 36. The Titans offense now, they get ready to do battle again here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. They'll try and get the run game going. This is Henry. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Running jet sweep here, Humphreys. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Seven yards there and a first down. I don't want to sound old or anything here, partner, but I remember the days in this situation where you just put the ball in the hands of a running back. Now it could be anyone carrying the football to try and pick up a first down or a touchdown. Mariota now to throw on first down. And an alley to run. And avoids the contact by sliding. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. On second down, here's Henry. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. They'll try to throw now. Mariota. He'll take a shot for Davis to the end zone. And incomplete. He dropped it in the end zone. What a job by this defense all game long. They've come together and really said, no one's crossing our goal line. And they're definitely not going to start right now. You can just see the dejection. Feel like nothing is working offensively. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. <laughs> Mariota on the delay to Henry. 
And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. 11 yards there, first down. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. What's the run? They're running it. Watch it. They keep it with Henry on first down. And he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Here's Mariota, option left, stepping up. He's going to keep it. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expecting to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. On the read option, it's Mariota. He can Marcus Mariota, nobody's going to catch him. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown from 17 yards out. And the Titans are able to cut into that deficit. Not the first time on this drive we saw him take matters into his own hands, and this time he finishes things off with a touchdown run. You're not going to be happy with me, but I think he took matters into his own feet, didn't he? No. Oh. <laughs> Davis from the top rope. <laughs> I like it. Parkey adds the extra point, and that'll cut the lead back down to 21. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. This is taken at his four. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now the Chargers offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really looked clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Hey man, hey man, watch the boot, watch the boot. From the 27, Rivers. He completes it to Henry. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Rivers now, perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven, it's first and 10. Running right, it's a handoff to Gordon. And the second wave of tacklers is gonna get him as they stop him behind the line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I have zero rooting interest in either team in this game. I only want a good game. But with all the offense we've seen from them tonight, it's kind of nice to see the defense step up and make a big play. Yeah, I was wondering if they were ever going to get him in the backfield. Nice to see him get a stop. And this Tennessee defense for the second straight play gets him behind the line. They're not messing around. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. 
This offense has had a lot to like in this game. I don't know that that last play, though, is going to make the highlight reel. It's not going to make the highlight reel, but it will be the focus of the film session that the team has to sit through. I've sat through those people. Never any fun. You're always excited about your good plays, and they actually fast forward through those. All right, that was good. All right, great. They get to the bad ones and really illuminate them. Not cool. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. So both teams trade touchdowns in the third as we're through three quarters of play. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Here's a second and five now from the 25. To throw Mariota. And he'll hit his tight end, Walker. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. This game just keeps evolving and changing, doesn't it? You got a tight end who can move around a lot, not necessarily using a big body on him. Sometimes you take a corner, a better cover guy, and put him on him and try and take him out of the game as we've seen in this one. You're exactly right. They've taken him out of the game. That was just his first catch. Big reason they're losing right now. The full start backs him up five, first and 15. I'm coming up to you. I'm coming up to you. From the gun, Mariota. It's caught, Humphreys. to Lewis on the draw. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. Continues to be a struggle for this offense and this home crowd. They're growing a little restless here in the second half. And I think they've just got to look at how they're trying to move the football. Yeah, you want to run it, but maybe you spread it out. Maybe some swing passes that can take the place of runs and give you a little more space. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. We often talk of situational football. Let's just call it team football. The defense did their job, got off the field, brought up a punting situation. So they're turning the ball back over to their offense. You think those guys will get along very well right now? Of course they will. Defense up. Now it's their turn to take it downfield. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Titans try it, but ultimately they fail on fourth down. And the Chargers will get the football back in excellent field position. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Gordon. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Well, that's a pretty good drive starter right there, and I don't know, partner, if you're even thinking about sitting on the ball right now. They may just want to run their regular offense. In plus territory, and, and as an offensive coordinator, you don't want your team to go into a shell, do you? No, you really don't, because as soon as you take your foot off the gas, it's real hard to put it back on and mash it, because once everyone's emotions come down, hard to start them up again. So I think you may want to keep them cranking high right here. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Four yards, the pickup, first down. 
So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. They'll run on first down. It's Gordon, and he'll get about five here as he'll take this down inside the 20-yard line. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Stay there. Stay there. Round 80. Let's go. On second down now. It's Gordon, and just a couple yards there down to the 17. If you're looking for glory, looking to get your name in the headlines, you do not want to play nose tackle. But how about what we just saw there? The ability to hold people up, take on extra blocks, and actually slip them and make a tackle on that play. That's big time. On third down, this is Melvin Gordon. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. He needed three, he got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. And his kick is indeed good. And that will extend the lead out to 24. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points. But this widens it out, as you said. And now it's all about ball control, isn't it? The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one taken from the seven. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, they'll start this drive at about the 37-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. But good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what happened. You think there. that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Four receivers now in the formation. Three to the left, one to the right on second and seven. Here's Mariota. Completes it to Davis. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Mariota now. Six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. To throw is Mariota. Henry's got it out on the left side. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Call it a three-yard game, and it'll bring up a second down. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. On the draw, this is Lewis. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays. Three first downs? That's a pretty good recipe for success. They'll stay with Lewis here on first down. 
And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. The draw play here, Lewis. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. On first down, Lewis. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. No luck whatsoever there on the draw. Yeah, they're supposed to use their aggressiveness against them. That was the hope. But maybe they had too big of a meal last night. A half step slow, <laughs> and he ends up running right into the meat of the defense. A second down run with Lewis. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. That had to be a nightmare as a ball carrier. You look up and see his big bear claws coming at you right away. No chance. <laughs> and just think how the game it continues to evolve. We always worried about the defensive ends and the outside linebackers bringing pressure. How about the play now? It's not just eating up blockers for these guys inside, is it? It's eating up blockers and making plays in the backfield. And just eating. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own. But as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you. And if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. <laughs> and that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And this will not work out. The Chargers able to recover. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. On second down, it's Gordon. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. This is Gordon. 
So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. It went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. You know, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Rivers here to throw. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. The 305-pound defensive end, Jarrell Casey, gets the sack. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> so it's third and long for the Chargers and Rivers after the sack. Now Rivers going to give it off to Gordon. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. Well, a little drama there at the end, but really this thing was already decided. The late points get scored, and then it ends on the kickoff. And I'm right there with you, partner. At the end of the game, they knew what they had to do. Just make sure you don't cough up the football at the end. Just take care of it, and victory was theirs, and that's exactly what they did. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we sign off from Nashville.